Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the fifth session of Lives of Problem Solving in Gate Metallurgical Engineering. These live sessions are brought to you in association with NPTEL and PMRF. So, if you have gone through the last four weeks of recorded videos, we have been discussing previous year questions. So, I hope all of you have familiarized yourself with the concepts and questions discussed. And in case you get any doubt, please do contact me on my personal mail ID. So, hope all of you are having a great week. And on that note, let us move on to today's questions. So, the first question we will be discussing today is that in an FCC crystal, the strain energy per unit length of a dislocation with Berger's vector A by 2110 is dash times that of an A by 2112 dislocation. So we have two given Burgess vector and we need to find the ratio of strain energy of these Burgess vector per unit length of a dislocation. So what are dislocations? Dislocations are actually usually present in the crystal as a result of accidents that happen during the growth of the crystal from them, that is during the crystallization process or as a result of prior mechanical deformation of these crystals. And unlike point imperfections that are thermodynamically stable, these are not thermodynamically stable because the enthalpy of the crystal increases much more rapidly with the presence of dislocation in comparison to the entropy of the crystal. So that is dislocations in materials and dislocations have some amount of distortional energy associated with them. So because compressive and tensile strains are always formed around the dislocations. And for example, compressive and tensile strains are usually formed around an edge dislocation and shear strains will be there around screw dislocation. And since we have mentioned that distortional energy is associated with them, the magnitude of the elastic strain energy by unit length of dislocation can be approximately given by the equation E is approximately equal to mu B square by 2, where mu is the shear model of the crystal and P is the Burgess vector. So, given usually Burgess vector will be given such as 1 by 2 a family of directions 110 or 1 by 2 family of directions 111 etc. So, how do we find the magnitude of a Burgess vector? The magnitude of a Burgess vector can be found out by multiplying the lattice parameter of the given crystal to the given vector type. So how is it? For example, we are considering a crystal with the lattice parameter equal to a so and so value, let us say 2.87 Armstrong or so. So the magnitude of a Burgess vector of type 1 by 2 1 1 1 is given by the lattice parameter multiplied by the root of the magnitude that is 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square divided by 2 that is this 1 by 2 comes here a is multiplied and since these are all ones we have 1 square plus 1 square plus 1 square 2.87 into root 3 by 2 so the magnitude mounts to somewhat 2.485 that is how we find the magnitude of Burgess vector and based on the previous equation mu b square by 2 two Burgess vector are given to us so let E1 and E2 be the strain energy per unit length of dislocations for both these Burgess vector. 110 is B1, 112 is B2. On substituting, we have mu by 2, that is mu by 2, into B1 square. B1 square is this entire term. And while substituting, it is root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 0 square. And here it will be 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. So this is the expansion. B1 and B2 are expanded on similar grounds as we have explained here. And what happens in order to find the relationship between the strain energy per unit length of both these Burgess vector, we can take E1 by E2. And when taking E1 by E2, mu by 2, mu by 2 will be same for both crystals. It is the shear modulus of the crystal as we already mentioned. Being of the same crystal or the same material, shear modulus will be the same. Now lattice parameter. It is mentioned that it is an FCC crystal of same type. Lattice parameter will also be same. Mu by 2 gets cancelled, mu by 2 gets cancelled, A and A gets cancelled these two from the denominator also get cancelled. Now what is there? Basically we have B1 square divided by B2 square. B1 square by B2 square will then become equal to root of what? 1 square plus 1 square plus 0 square divided by root of 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. Since this is B1 and B2 square, we have an outer square as well. So this root and square will cancel each other out and basically it is 1 square plus 1 square divided by 1 square plus 1 square plus 2 square. So this is 2, this is 6, 2 by 6, hence the ratio is 1 by 3. And if we cross multiply, 
3 times E1 will be equal to E2. So that is the relationship between the strain energy per unit length of dislocation with the given Berger sector. So based on the question how it is framed, we need to find out whether we have to write our answer in terms of 1 by 3 or 3. So that is the case with this question. I hope it's clear to all of you. So in such questions, the important thing that we have to know is the elastic strain energy per unit length of dislocation that equation mu b square by 2. The next thing that we have to know is how to calculate the magnitude of Berger's vector. That is, we have to multiply the crystal that is parameter with the magnitude of the given vector type. So this is the case is because here it is an FCC crystal of same material. You might be asked to compare between different materials, between different crystal types of the same material, etc. So accordingly, mu values may or may not differ, A values may or may not differ. So and the ratio can entirely change. So please keep in your mind about these two equations. One is E is approximately equal to mu d square by 2. Another one is how to find the magnitude of a Burgess vector of given type. This is how they are represented. So here it is given including A, but usually it is such that we have to multiply by A with the magnitude of the given vector type. So I hope it's clear for all of you. On that note, we can move to the next question. Match the names listed in group 1 with the reactions listed in group 2. So we have your tectic, peri, tectic, peri, tectoid, mono, tectic and a set of equations like alpha plus beta is equal to gamma and so on. So let me tell you. L is the liquid phase. Alpha and beta and gamma are solid phases. So basically this comes from what are known as phase diagrams. And these are what are known as invariant reactions. So let us see what is an invariant reaction. We know that from the Gibbs phase rule, F plus P is equal to C plus N. Where C is the number of components and P is the number of phases present. N is the non-compositional variables like pressure and temperature. And F is the number of degrees of freedom. For a binary system, when f is equal to 0, so what is this before that? What is the number of degrees of freedom? Which means it is the number of externally controlled variables that can be changed independently without altering the number of phases in equilibrium. That is, we can change, if we calculate a value of f, so for example, if we get the value of f as 2, which means that we can two, change two variables independently without affecting the equilibrium state of the system. So f is equal to 0 gives what is known as an invariant reaction. So what happens is that whenever f is equal to 0, we cannot change any of the component of the system because any change in any component will produce a new phase. For example, in case of a binary alloy, that is a two component system, and the maximum number of phases allowed in equilibrium is 3. All the three phases will exist in equilibrium at that particular point and moving along the x-axis or y-axis in the phase diagram will produce a new phase. That is, we cannot change the variables when f is equal to 0. That is what corresponds to an invariant reaction. So there are different types of invariant reactions in binary systems. So eutectic, eutectoid, peritectic, peritectoid, monotectic, metatectic and so on. So eutectic means that liquid can reversibly change into alpha plus beta. Suppose this is part of the phase diagram. See, liquid changes to alpha plus beta in this particular point. Similarly, alpha plus beta changes into liquid in this particular point. A change in this direction or this direction will produce what? A new phase. So that is the invariant reaction at this point. Similarly, you take toid. Gamma becomes alpha plus beta or alpha plus beta becomes gamma. So... Also note that whenever there is an void present in our equation, it is usually a composition of what? Solids only. Alpha, beta, gamma. See, whenever there is void, alpha, beta, gamma. So that is the case. And these are examples. Eutectic reactions are found in the silver copper phase diagram, the leptin phase diagram. Eutectoid reactions are found in the iron carbon, aluminum carbon, peritectic in copper zinc and so on. So... There are other reactions like metatectic where the liquid phase is also involved. See, alpha reversibly changes into liquid plus beta or two liquids can reversibly change into one. So different types of such reactions are there. Two more are there in addition to this one. They are less commonly found. That is the monotectoid. Again, two solids and three solids and syntactic, etc. Two liquids combine reversibly changing into one solid phase. So these are the different invariant points that are found in binary alloys. So in that case, 
what are these you take tick liquid gives alpha plus beta sure right so it is either a or c then peritectic again involving a liquid and two solids liquid plus beta gives alpha that is four so hence from these two itself we can fix but for our just the sake of understanding more peritectoid what will happen r is equal to one that is alpha plus beta gives us sorry gamma plus beta gives us alpha basically you don't need to mix with alpha beta you can just consider them as solid one solid two solid three and so on like it's less confusing if you use like that otherwise we will think okay alpha is not here it is wrong it's not like that it can come with any interchangeable composition of alpha beta gamma it's basically solid one plus solid two gives solid three and for example monotectic it is third one liquid one gives liquid two plus alpha so our answer is option c so this is all about invariant reactions and the different types of invariant reactions that are present so the thing is that please keep in your mind these questions are repeated many times so first know what is invariant reaction know the gibbs phase rule how to calculate whatever is missing in a gibbs phase rule the most common type of invariant reaction at least the first four ones memorize and the examples of few systems as such so that is about invariant reactions and gibbs phase rule and as an activity i would suggest that an iron carbon diagram has three of such invariant reactions and i request that all of you find those three invariant reactions and also it's very important that you go through the iron carbon phase diagram that also will help you answering in a lot of questions so i hope that's clear for all of you now let us go on to the third question when boron it is a trivalent atom is doped onto silicon the resulting material is dashed this is more of less uh, maybe i think most of you will be able to answer directly but not only boron so many of you might have many ways of memorizing parts of the periodic table so if possible for material scientist i would suggest that at least you know the first 20 elements in their order and so and if more is possible it's good that it will help you in identifying a lot of trends not only with respect to semiconductors but with a lot of other materials as well so this is the third column elements this is the fourth column fifth column so so silicon the intrinsic semiconductor that is in our question is silicon and whenever we are doping silicon with something it becomes an extrinsic semiconductor right we are changing the conductivity or we are changing the number of electrons and holes present whenever silicon of group 4 is doped with something from the group 3 it has a valence of 4 it is four electrons in the outermost shell this has a valence of 3 boron aluminum gallium indium thallium etc so instead of 4 we are replacing something with a lesser valency which means that a hole or a vacancy or a deficiency is created so it's a p type semiconductor right and if you are doping it something of the fifth group it has an excess electron which means that is pentavalent atom these pentavalent atoms create an excess electron therefore it will become an n type semiconductor p type semiconductor has an excess of holes in comparison to electrons n type semiconductor has an excess of electrons in comparison to holes so this this is the array of silicon atom this particular silicon atom is replaced by our whatever say let us say phosphorus i'm keeping phosphorus instead so initially it had only so see one gray color dot has four the nearby gray color atom has also four that is how the eight is satisfied but here instead of eight there is one extra electron so that is n type semiconductor and when i am replacing with boron what happens instead of eight this one only has seven that's bad see that's a hole that's not bad it's actually good sorry so that is the hole that is present it results in the formation of a p type semiconductor so phosphorus boron see that is how an intrinsic semiconductor was doped to become an n type semiconductor or a p type semiconductor a very simple rather direct question you can answer this very easily so since boron creates a vacancy when doped with silicon the resulting material is a p type semiconductor so and the options is p type n type superconductor and zeta so this do, these two doesn't matter right we know that silicon is an intrinsic semiconductor material it is being doped it's basically the question is about semiconductors and all you have to know is what happens when trivalent and pentavalent atoms are doped trivalent means valency is 3 pentavalent means valency is 4 silicon has a sorry pentavalent is valency of 5 silicon has a valency of 4 so that is how so this is basic understanding of what we can do in case of doped semiconductors i hope it's clear for all of you so now let us move on to the fourth and final question of this week 
that's ptaps in the net so it was asked when gate 2015 for one mark the next is in conventional unit cell of a crystal a is equal to b not equal to c alpha is equal to beta is equal to gamma is equal to 90 degree the crystal belongs to which of the following system this was asked in gate metallurgical engineering 2015 for one mark see unit cells the seven crystal systems 14 revised lattice is like the basic fundamental of every material science lecture or class that you have taken you will learn it in like the first week itself i guess so it's very important that you know about the bravais lattice as well as the crystal systems present so in that case we need to know what first what is meant by a crystal system so in the solid crystalline material the atoms are molecules are arranged in a regular three-dimensional manner so please note that there are seven crystal systems and all of these seven crystal systems the atoms are molecules are actually present inside the lattice so we know that the smallest feature present in a crystal structure is the unit cell and the unit cell when dip repeated indefinitely in all three directions gives rise to what is known as a crystal structure suppose we are removing the atoms or unit atom from the crystal by a point and replacing them by a point in space those are known as space lattice and when the each point in a space lattice lattice point is known as a lattice point so basically these lattice points are to be filled with what is known as basis or pattern basis is actually an atom or a group of atoms that is present in a crystal structure so first we had the crystal structure on removing the atoms present in crystal structure we known as what is the space lattice and each point in the space lattice is known as the lattice point and the la arrangement of the lattice points or the configuration of the lattice point is what is known as the bravais lattice which means that the surrounding of each lattice point is the same or the surrounding of an atom or all the atoms present at the lattice points are identical that is what is bravais lattice so basically bravais lattice plus basis gives us what is known as the crystal structure or the crystal system hence there are 14 bravais lattices and seven crystal systems so from this table you will be able to see the seven crystal systems and if you count the figures present on the right hand side you can see that there are 14 bravais lattices present these bravais lattices we are getting by changing the atomic positions in the crystal systems based on whether the atoms are present in the edge center base center face center or they are given in a simple cubic arrangement or simple arrangement so first the most basic one is the cubic one where a is equal to b is equal to c a b and c are replaced by a1 a2 a3 here so a1 a2 a3 that those are the three lattice parameter and between these lattice parameters we have alpha beta gamma so cubic means that all are same all angles are 90 degree the second one is alpha is equal to beta not equal sorry a is equal to b not equal to c all are 90 that is tetragonal cubic has all simple cubic is there bcc is there fcc is there n centered is there so that is the case and then we have ct so basically i use a formula ct over hmt for finding out the order of this you can find out some kind of an order so first one is cubic then tetragonal orthorhombic a not equal to b not equal to c or a1 not equal to a2 not equal to c sorry a3 not equal to c and the angles will be 90 so first three angles are equal to 90 that is c t o then we have what is known as r rhombohedral is also known as trigonal then a1 is equal to a2 is equal to a3 again a1 2 2 3 is equal to 3 1 that is greater than 120 degree that is the rhombohedral one so based on this table you will be able to identify the seven crystal systems and the bravais lattices of them accordingly so you can also see the changes that happen to the actual shape of the crystal system producing different amounts of strains and different types of crystal systems so i ask you that all of you please go through the actual definition of crystal systems, bravais lattice, space lattice, what is a lattice point, as well as the 14 bravais lattice and 7 crystal systems. I hope it's clear for all of you the basic idea. So find out ways that you can memorize the relationship between the lattice parameters as well as the angle between the lattice parameters. So in that case, it is A is equal to B not equal to C. Then alpha, beta, gamma is equal to 90 degree. 
that is it will be what tetragonal in nature so that is all about the questions that we have discussed today i hope all of you are clear with all of the concepts discussed today and in case you have any doubts or queries please do email me at santra.tmrf@gmail.com and also at the same time in case you want discussions on any other additional topics please feel free to talk and all of these videos are uploaded in youtube and the ppts are also available to you so thank you so much for your time have a great weekend and hoping to see you next thursday from 6 pm to 7 pm bye bye and take care